In the last video, we discussed setting up your workspace with panels. In the next few videos, we'll talk about some of those panels in detail. In this video, we'll spend some time talking about the Tools panel and the Color Picker. If you're following along in the Photoshop book, we're in Chapter 6 on page 15. The purpose of the Tools panel and the Color Picker is to allow easy access to some of the most commonly used tools and functions in Photoshop. The Tools panel can be found on the left-hand side of your workspace, generally speaking. If you're setting it up the way I suggested in the last video, then you'll find it on the left-hand side. There are two view options available to you in the Tools panel. The single column view is shown and a double column view. To change, you simply go to the double arrow at the top, click on it, and you end up with a double column view. Click again to bring it back to the single column view. Personally, I use only the single column view. I find it the most efficient way to go. However, if you've got a lower resolution monitor, chances are you're going to find the double column view is more efficient. The color picker can be accessed throughout the program. The most common way to access the color picker is to click on the foreground color or the background color in the tools panel. The color picker will then pop up. You'll notice that the color affected is listed in the top of the dialog box. In this case, the foreground color. You also have access to the color picker and many other functions such as the text tool, the line tool, and so on. For example, when the text tool is activated, I can go to the options bar, click on this rectangular box, the color picker pops up for the text tool. And of course it says text color right there in the dialog box. Keep in mind that there are over 50 tools available to you in the tools panel. Not only are there about 20 plus tools showing on top, as you can see in this diagram, but wherever there is a triangle in the bottom right hand corner of the tool, there are more tools underneath the tool on top. Don't be overwhelmed by what you see. You're only going to need a handful of these, including the ones you see in this diagram. By the way, you can find this diagram on page 15 of the book. So here's how you work with the tools panel. The diagram shown here is an example of tools hidden underneath the top tool once you expand them by clicking and holding down your left mouse button on that tools icon. In this particular example, we actually have four tools hidden underneath the active tool, which in this case is the brush tool. You can tell the active tool because it has the little black square beside it. You'll also notice in this diagram that each group of tools has a keyboard shortcut assigned to it. All single digit speed keys in Photoshop are reserved for the tools panel for ease of use. Now you'll notice when you place your mouse cursor over a particular tool, the name of that tool appears below your cursor as a tooltip along with that tool's speed key. So for example, right now, the text tool is active. If I want to quickly go to the brush tool, I just hit B on my keyboard and voila, the brush tool is now active. You'll also notice that for each tool you select, a new options bar will show up. The options bar is a menu of options at the top of the workspace and it's unique to the tool selected. For example, right now I have a specific unique options bar as I am picking the brush tool. If I cycle through, let's go to the text tool. We have a different options bar. If I go to the magic wand tool, the speed key is W, we get a different options bar. We'll discuss the relevant tools in detail in later videos, including what's available to you in the options bar. Now let's talk about how to work with the color picker. And to do that, I'm going to click on the foreground color to bring up the color picker dialog box. The color picker is easiest to use for a photographer's purpose when the H radio button is selected. And in the spirit of KISS, just take that on faith. We'll learn a lot more about color in section two of this video series and in the book. There are three ways to pick your desired color. The first way is to click in the color palette and or drag the circle cursor to change the brightness and saturation. So for instance, you can see if I click in this box, the circle cursor will come to wherever I've clicked. And in this case, I've picked a value of red. The second way is to move the sliders in the vertical rainbow colored bar to change the U of your image. And those would be these little triangles here. You can drag them up and down and we can go through the whole gamut of colors. The third way is to enter the RGB values directly in the boxes right down here where it says RGB for red, green, and blue. So for instance, if we wanted to choose black, the values for that are zero. I'll hit the tab key, zero. And I'm just using the numerical pad on my keyboard. Tab key again, zero. There's my black. You can see that it gives both a current view of the color that you've picked versus the new color that you want. By the way, if I go ahead and click it here and choose 255, 255, 255, that is white. 
Keep in mind that if your RGB values are all of equal value, such as 127, 127, 127, and I'll just uh, do that in here, then your color is a shade of gray. By the way, if some of this numerical stuff seems a bit confusing when it comes to color, don't worry, we're going to discuss this in great detail in section two.